Welcome back everybody. I haven't been had time to make a video for a while. I just decided this morning that I better make a video about this machine. So this is a Zamboni Electric 552 electric ice resurfacer. This one's got lead acid batteries. It's probably 10 years old, 12 years old in that vintage. I don't know exactly. So I've been maintaining this machine for as long its lifetime since it was new. I think this is the third set of batteries. Anyway, lead acid unit, I guess the new ones have lithium. Board brush. So the reason why I'm going to talk a little bit about the board brush is this this was throwing what was called a pump pump brush motor fault. Okay, so it's going to come up on your display here when the machine's on. And what that's referring to is your pump motor. So this is the electric motor that runs your hydraulic pump, which is in there, belt drive. Uh, many of you, if you've been maintaining these, probably are familiar with that. I've got this pump unbolted pardon me, this motor unbolted and turned around. So the bolt's in here. The reason why is because I've got to change the brushes in the motor. Now this one, I don't think needs new brushes. Here's the old ones. Any of you guys working on Zambonis, let me know. And there's no marks on these ones. The drive motor brushes have marks that say 80%, 60%, kind of like your wear bars on your tire. Uh, the reason why I don't know if this one needed these is because the, they're probably three quarters of them probably three quarters of their life. There's the new one in the bag. There's the old one. Anyway, it was throwing the code and that's, I mean, you, you kind of got to service these things and make sure that it's not going to, that it's not going to ruin the armature or the motor or anything. So it's just a couple things I wanted to talk about. If you're doing this job is see these, these are almost like a, like a big spade connector. They have a hole in them, but you take the screw out of your brush holder up in here and you, you don't have, pardon me, you don't have to take the screw out. Okay, so that slides into this piece like that, like a spade connector. I took this one out mistakenly and you don't have to do that. Get some light in there for you. The screw goes in there. So here's one that's still bolted in. Okay, a good yard on that and it'll come out, see? So that's what you have to do to get the brush out of there after you take your, your holder out, which is this piece, this, this spring right here. It is a bit of a trick to put that back in too because the way this holder works is this is like a little coiled up piece of spring steel here. So when you take this out, I'll just pop it out here, pinch this part, roll it back. See how that'll kind of roll back like a, see it's like a little, rolled up piece of steel there. I, I don't know what they would call that, like a, it's a type of spring. I just don't know the technical name for it right now. Anyway, I had a, a pick here. I found that the easiest way to put that back together is just hook a, a cotter pin removal tool, which I just ha can't really find here. I guess I should have put a little more thought into this before I started filming. There it is right there is just take this and put it in there, pull it out, put it on there, and then that's hard to do with holding the camera, and then just slide your holder tensioner spring in, then you take your pick out, and there it goes. It's gonna hold that new brush in there tightly, and then as it wears, it's going to continue to hold that up against the armature. So you'll see that the slip rings on this one, the commutator rings are really clean and that's because I've cleaned them with, the new brushes will come with a couple of different stones they look like that'll clean them. So when I get the motor back in there, I'll show you how that's done as well. Okay, this, one's, this one's hard, it's like a stone. You can see where it's sharpened. That's because when you run the motor, when you get it back together and put that on your, before you take the brushes out, you put that on your commutator rings. And then you go over with this one, looks kind of like jeweler's rouge, but it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a, a eraser, a pencil eraser, this one. And that just polishes it up. So this one actually seems to kind of cut. It's like sand, it sands it. Probably silica, you might want, probably should wear a, a mask when you do that because a lot of dust comes off this. And then you just use this, we'll stick this one in there. So I'll show you how, I'll, I'll just go over it again 
when I get it back together to show you how. It's kind of a pain getting that motor out of there. You gotta take the covers off. Then when you get the, to get this cover off, here, this big cover that goes over the tank and everything, you've got to take the, your, the icebreaker handle over there. The spring for that, the bolt that holds the spring is down in here. Don't forget to take that one out, that'll hold it on. And then you got these two here for the hydraulic pump. Pardon me, for the uh, hydraulic that holds the hydraulic tank in. I might weld a nut or put a body nut or something on there if I can, but it's really hard to get a wrench back in there when this cover stood up. And I just left the water hose attached. So there's also an adjuster plate here that goes back on the motor. While you're in there, annual maintenance items. Maybe I'll just do a little bit about annual maintenance on this machine and some upgrades that we do. But might as well change the belt while you're in here because it takes a while to get this off. And if you're in the middle of a hockey game, you definitely don't want something stupid like a belt breaking, especially after you've done your annual maintenance and people are gonna be questioning why it broke down after that. So I got, I'm gonna be working on the water pump and a bunch of other things. The motor in particular was the one that I wanted to talk about because this, this brush in here, there, is facing this way and it's pretty much impossible to get out without unbolting the motor. You don't have to unhook any of the electrical connections or anything, there's enough wire here. I just got it on the hoist up just spin that around and then you'll be able to get at it but just don't do don't take that screw out of there just pull these out i didn't realize that until it was too late so i got to put the screw back in there with my that connector on off the old brush this one here anyway so that's uh, that's the brush the pump brush mo pump motor brush got to get that in the right order how you do that on this machine and I'll continue on with changing. I'm going to change contacts. I'll probably put a new impeller in the water pump, a new chain, possibly auger chain, maybe a new belt for the water pump. It depends on how many hours you guys put on these machines. You got to use your discretion a little bit. I don't think the brushes really need to be changed in this. Like I say, if, if there's some guys working on these in the comment section, let me know. I, I personally don't think that those brushes were, were worn out. They're like, probably 75% still. So there must've been something else, maybe just build up a carbon. I blow these out every year, even if I don't change the brushes, but blow this motor out, but maybe that was part of the problem. All right, a couple things I noticed here. You'll see on this wire, see how that's bared. I'm pretty sure that these are sensing wires. And that's what tells you if these pump brushes, or if the, if the brush is wore out and then it's gonna the brush holder or the spring is going to contact the rotor because the manual says if you don't change these in time that damage to the motor can can happen i think that's all that was happening with this is that was grounding out or shorting out against the against the housing of the motor and throwing an intermittent fault so it wasn't a steady fault it was good come and go which means that, that it could be getting close the, the brushes could be wet, worn out and just once in a while there it's making contact in this case I don't, I don't believe that that was the case because I imagine that those go into the brush to a certain depth in here and then it'll come on before you wear these out completely and I've got it apart I'm just gonna put new ones in so that was one of the problems the other one I found is just when I took it out here this one was broke this one just broke right off so that might have been when I was taking it out I can't, I can't really tell. It doesn't look like there's much bared wire on there. It doesn't look like it's shiny copper wire coming out of there. So it could have been, this could have been broke for a while or breaking. So that could have been, it could have been from either one of those. So when you put the brushes back in, just make sure you don't forget to hook those sensor wires up. Cause if it's that back one and you got to try and reach in there to do it when you get the motor bolted back up, you're going to be unhappy. Here is the spade connector for the brushes. Sorry, I'm trying to film and do this at the same time. And it just, you just slide it in there like so. Pretty snug, but it'll go. So I'm gonna try to protect these somehow, try and get these routed so that they'll just kind of lay in there and not, and not contact to help them out the housing. Yeah, it's pretty tough they're gonna there so maybe i'll just put some tape on them or something 
the ones that are like I say in the back that you can't get at those are the ones you definitely want to make sure are protected because if they short out you're going to be taking this out this out anyway so you're probably just going to replace the brushes if they're worn so anyway that's a big beast of a of motor but that's where I'm at so far and I'll carry on here okay so all the brushes have been changed make sure see I, I put some protection on these just some electrical tape uh, hockey tape on these wires here and there's also some foam inside this cover here so the wires shouldn't chafe like they were but I just did a little extra protection anyway might want to do that just make sure that when you do this that your brush holder clips these clips here are pushed all the way and you see there's kind of a divot that goes around that that pin there and holds everything together and I think these are called scroll springs I couldn't remember the name of them so just make sure that those are all clipped all the way in before you put the motor back in because like I say if you get if the one in the far corner isn't you're gonna have a hard time with that make sure you put your bolts in on up here too before you slide the motor back into place because it's really hard to get that back and down in there to get that bolt in you can't get your hand in there so now I'll show you how to use these so make sure that if you're putting your fingers in here working on it this is I think 480 volts DC it'll give you a good zap if, if it's energized so just unplug your batteries before you do that but I'm going to turn the key on I've got the power hooked up now so we'll get this going and then I'll show you how to polish your commutator rings <laughs> how shiny those are. I had already polished it once but then just working on it I was blowing uh, the, the graphite and stuff out. I'm gonna have to blow it out again because you can see that you don't want that dust in your motor. But while I was cleaning the motor and blowing the graphite out it got a little bit more on the commutator rings there and you might have heard that it, it was a little bit noisy there and it quieted right down as soon as that white dust got in there so I'm guessing that helped lap the brushes in little bit of wear on the brushes but man I tell you for the hours on this machine and the shape that the old brushes that I just replaced were in I'm not worried about a little bit of wear so I'm gonna blow it out with compressed air now when you're cleaning these be careful what you're using to clean make sure that, that if you're using solvents I have sprayed some solvents in there like electrical contact cleaner brake clean that you're not getting it on insulation that it'll melt so you don't want to get it on the windings of the motor or up inside the motor case, but I think you're fine spraying out your brush holders and stuff like that with it. But also make sure that everything's dry in there before you start the motor up. So you can see the sparks in there. If you're spraying brake clean, electrical contact cleaner in there, it's going to ignite when you, when you start this motor up. So just be care careful of that. Got my new belt on and it's lined up really nice. Old belt was in good shape, but that's just a preventative maintenance thing that you're going to want to do when you, as I say, I wanted the, the main thing I wanted to talk about was changing the brushes in that motor because there's a bit of a technique to it, it seems. The other thing, but I think I'll just make this video about just doing an annual maintenance and some of the upgrades on a Zamboni Ice Resurfacer. Is these are a very durable machine and they do have the market in Canada, anyways, in my area. Pretty much everybody's running these because they're a lot better than the other brands that are available. So I've done a few repairs on this machine, but basically it's, it's just a quite a simple setup, which is nice. I'm going to take you through just the annual services. It hasn't been for the age of this machine over a decade old. It is a low hour unit, which is probably saving it, but we haven't had a lot of problems with it. It's been pretty good. So I don't have anything bad to say about the unit itself. Anyway, so I'm going to carry on now and take you guys back through. 
some more of the annual maintenance. Just a couple other things that I want to mention while I got this cover off. Got the big cover installed now over top of the pump motor and the electrics in here. So you, when you take it out, you, the icebreaker spring is right in there. To get this cover off, like I mentioned, you've got to take that bolt out up in there that holds that spring. That's the top mount for the spring, if you will. And then the icebreaker door works on it. There. So it's good to keep a couple of those springs around. You can get them at a you can get a long spring like that from usually from your automotive parts store on the on a big kit of springs. So it doesn't matter where you get it, but it's a good thing to have them around because it's quite often that they'll break. Sometimes you can just bend the end and make another hook in them, but sometimes you've got to replace the whole spring. Something else on the icebreaker door that I want to mention is from new Zamboni welds on a little yoke just like that onto the icebreaker door and it'll wear out in here because it's constantly being moved up and down so what i've done is they want to sell you the whole lever and the door and the pin because it's all welded together it's all one piece the door of course isn't one piece but the the lever part like the, the handle and the and the yoke is one piece from the supplier so what i've done is just taken a brake pot Clevis should be able, you can get these at your air brake stores. I, now I can just replace that. I can take the door off and it's really easy to build another piece here. You drill a hole and a chunk of flat iron, weld it on there and you're done. Line it all up and you're done. So I've done that before. I, that's just something that makes this more serviceable. Otherwise you've got to pull that whole rod out. It goes all the way up to here. And also just over time, when they're pounding down on this thing, always pounding this rubber here. These rubber, this rubber bumper will deteriorate. There's one on the top and I believe there's one on the, yeah, there's one on the bottom as well. And you notice that this one's a little thicker than the factory one from Zamboni. It's because I used a shock rubber for this that I had just one that, a spare one that I had from changing some shocks years ago. And it's still in really good shape. But that's holding up a lot better than the ones from factory. So that's just a couple of little upgrades I made there with the icebreaker door. So now I'm going to carry on, show you guys a little bit more about uh, annual maintenance routine on the Zamboni. So annual maintenance items here. So this is the power distribution box behind the seat of the machine. Now you've got a main power relay right here with contacts in there. All this stuff's made so that you can take it apart and replace the contacts. This one's off and on every time you turn the key. So you're going to see in there, see some wear, There's some light, see the contacts start to get kind of marked up and worn. And then your forward reverse are these two here. So every few years or so you may want to replace these. They start to get some wear as well. Just take a look at them and see if it's worth it. Uh, some places that have put a lot of hours on their machines and they're worried about them will replace all these every year. I don't think that's quite necessary, but it depend, all depends on the use and the hours. So you can see where these are all marked. You might want to do that or take a picture before you start taking these apart because it is kind of, there's a, there's a, if you have the manual, there's a diagram in the manual. So you can't put it back together that way, but it's probably not a bad idea just to mark these out somehow or draw a picture or take, take a picture with your phone or something for reassembly. I've already got the main power relay disconnected here so I'll show you what that looks like with the contacts. I just have to take a couple screws out there and this top piece will come out. There are springs and stuff in there so you just have to be careful. And here's what it looks like inside. So you can see that there is some wear especially on that hot side there. So I'll be replacing those. I, I forgot that I actually had to take that little switch off the inside here or the outside of it just got to take that off to get those two big screws out and you can pull that out oh, there goes one of them and then you can take your contacts out the other side just make sure you disconnect your batteries of course before you start working on it and there's what the other side looks like the contactors so you can buy these from your dealership there goes the other one down there and get all the individual pieces and 
replace them as needed. They're all the same all the, through these different relays. So if you replace the whole, the whole, every one of them, then you just order more of the same parts. Get a kit like this that'll have your parts. I already put the new contacts in the relay side of it. Now I'm just gonna pull the old ones out of here. Pretty straightforward. Here's the old parts. I did, actually the one is different. As you can see that bar contactor goes all the way through both relays there, connects them both. The rest of the rest of those parts inside are common though. Like these parts will be the same. So anyways, just whatever ones you need to replace, you have to get those coming from your dealer, but it just comes in a bag like this, has all your parts, your new ones. Take the bolt, Oop, there goes that one. Take your nuts off the back side. And just go ahead and install your new contacts there. Put it back together and you're off to the races. Zamboni races. High speed outfit. Anyway, so I'm just going to go ahead and get all that done and then put my wires back on, of course. Hook this back up and carry on with some other annual maintenance items with this. Something else that comes up for annual maintenance is your water pump impeller. I think Zamboni does recommend to replace it annually, but just take a look at it and see if there's any cracks or anything. You're gonna see them right in here. It's from the flex on the impeller. This one looks fine. If you see any cracks in it, just go ahead and replace it. Make sure you don't forget to order a new gasket for the cover. So here we have horizontal auger bearings. You have to take a grease nipple out and they just give you just enough room. Actually, that's a grease line that goes out to the end here. Got to spin that hose off. And then when, before you put it back together, just make sure everything is got a lot of anti-seize on it and it just slides off and on like this. You got a lock collar on the bearing, pillow block type bearing there. Not really easy to get at, but it's not that bad either. And then of course you want to maybe sp sprockets, depending on what kind of condition they're in. I'm not replacing them this time around, but you're probably going to want to change your chain. So a lot of companies are going to just sub and this up for a RK O-ring chain for a, from a dirt bike supplier. These are just a basic chain that you get from the manufacturer here. They don't last that long. The only reason why I'm replacing it with this style of chain is because I've got some here. This is kind of the kind of stuff you want to keep in stock. It's one of these breaks during a hockey game. It, the machine's going to be down. So this is an annual maintenance item. We usually always change these two bearings. There's one on each side. This one's a little harder to get at because you've got to take this collar. It's got like a, a lock collar with a keyway. Set screws in it. Holds this and then sprocket bolts onto that. Maybe I can pull it off. No, it's stuck on there too good. So you'll have to take all that stuff off and if, if it hasn't been apart for a number of years or even one year when it's new, I don't think they put any kind of anti-seize on there. And it could, sometimes can get tough to do, so you might want to just order the parts because you might end up cutting them apart with the cutting torch. So now we've just got to reinstall the chain. Probably put a new water pump belt on it as well, just for good measure, just for preventative maintenance. And then this side, let's use a Dana 60, probably HD front differential. It's because it has to be the heavier axle because of the weight of the batteries on the front end of these units. This, as far as I know, is just your Chev Dodge one ton front differential of like from the 80s, early 90s. This one, you can see the, the seal had failed and a lot of times you'll get moisture in here just because of the hot cold cycles and because this thing's always getting sprayed with snow on when it's shaving the ice. So you can see where this one's been pitted. I've pulled and repacked the bearings before. I usually put some never seize. You wanna make sure that you get this all sealed up with grease, maybe spray some fluid film or something on it. Cause you can see the rust, how, how bad it gets. I've already went over this with emery cloth and cleaned it up with a, a bit of a, like with a scotch bright. Seal surface you can see isn't in very good shape. So it's gonna to continue to leak a little bit we always want to just always want to make sure your seals packed with grease really good and then like i say put some fluid film or something in there but it's still very tough with the way that it's it's out in the cold then it goes into the zamboni room where it's warm in the arena where they where they store it 
and then it's gonna draw in moisture or condensation and it always seems to get into the bearing here and, and seize it onto the spindle. So I've got spindles coming for this. When you order spindles, you can likely get them from a Dana. I think it's a Dana dealer that you have to get these from, but usually you're a local auto parts store if you go under. Just order it under a Dodge one ton or, or a Chev single wheel. Cabin chassis, front differential should be the same. I believe these are six inch spindles. Also people like Yukon gear and axle can get them as well. Anyways, wherever you want to source them from. And they use like a drive flange. There's the gear that goes on these. Of course, there's no locking hubs on these units. They're always turning one, one direction when they're shaving ice. So what you want to do is make sure you check your U-joint out really good. U-joints can break. We've had an axle snap here, the short, short side axle. The reason why that's happening is not so much when it's turning on the ice because the tires can still slip a bit on the ice. It's mostly when they're dumping outside in the Zamboni dump driving over the, the uh, asphalt. And since there's no way to unlock the front diff, the axles are going to twist a lot. Short wheelbase on this, on this unit and a short axle as well because these are narrowed. So the cap that goes on instead of a locking hub is lots of times you'll see these if you're taking it apart. It's got silicone around the, around the cap, just sealing it up. And just make sure you cover everything with a coating of grease inside there. Because like I say, if you don't put silicone in those caps, that hot, cold cycles from these things is going to draw moisture in. And it's going to get into your spindle bearing inside here that, that holds the axle. And it's also going to get into, into your bearing surfaces. And on the spindle here, you'll start to see rust underneath the bearing as well. See, there's a little bit of rust staining from the outside bearing. But I've never had the outside bearing seize up on this unit. It's just this inside one that we've had problems with which of course will be remedied with some new spindles and fresh seals. I'm just gonna slap this one back together because like everything, parts for these are taking a while to get. But I wanted to show everybody that this is part of your annual maintenance routine. You wanna take these wheel bearings out and repack them, inspect everything, replace the your inside seal there. I've got the new race in the hub already there. The bearing of course was shot. It, was, it had rust on it, so it was definitely time. So at least repack, possibly, service your spindles, change the bearings and new seals for sure, depending on what you find when you get it apart. So here's the bottom vertical auger bearing. This is an annual, they say semi-annual maintenance item. So you can let them go two years. This one I haven't changed. I think I let this one go two seasons and that's what I had to do to get it off. There's some parts of it down there. As you can see, the bearing was in, was fine. Yeah, it wasn't wore out, but it is just, this is a preventative maintenance item and changing it every year is probably gonna help stop this from happening. And if you don't have a hoist, you don't wanna be laying underneath this thing doing that. And just to let you know, there was a whole bunch of anti-seize compound underneath that race, between that race and the shaft. And last time I replaced this, it actually just slid right off and I was able to do it down at the arena without a hoist. But this time, for whatever reason, when you've got, this thing's constantly getting pelted with snow from the augers in there and it's gonna melt down into the race. And who knows if you got a little bit of ammonia or, or salt possibly from the softener or whatever, you can get some really corrosive types of water in there and, and whatnot. Anyway, so that's something that should have taken me 20 minutes and it's taken me a lot longer than that to, to replace, but I'm glad that I'm doing it here where I have the hoist. Some of the linkages here you wanna take a look at, like this big drop draw bar deal that runs the your so those are the bushings there that you want to that, that's what lifts and lowers your conditioner the hydraulic cylinder comes down to here so if you're ma doing maintenance on these machines you're familiar with all these parts so th this one's greased quite well and i've found i think it's around three thousand hours now and none of these need to be changed i've taken these out and and looked at them and they're all within well within spec but i do have some here just in case and there's a replaceable bushing pin and bushing in each part of this this hitch frame so you don't necessarily have to order the whole frame if your bushings are worn. And there'll probably be those ones back there. There will be a little bit of movement when you put this down and pick it up. You might see a little bit of movement, but if it's not right in the pin and bushing, chances are it's they're, they're fine. Because this one you could see it almost looked like there was a little bit of play in them, but they were still measured the same as a brand new one. I think that the play is just because the cylinder is so far away from the end of your conditioner 
this will start to move a little bit. Like there's gonna be a little bit of a tolerance between this pin, that pivot pin, the conditioner pin, and just all of that added up and way over on the end past the blade. When you lower this and pick it up, this cylinder will start to move before the conditioner does. And it, it may give the impression that the, the pins and bushings are worn. Check them anyways, but that it may, it may not be what you think. You wanna check your U-joints here. These things are always turning one direction. So if your machine doesn't have this upgrade, this, this clutch in the front drive shaft, that's something that you will need. Not cheap, but it'll help with drive line wind up. This axle shaft broke the ears off. The U-joint, I don't think broke, but the actual axle shaft did and I had to get the entire assembly last year. So you wanna check that one. This is the short side and these are always turning one direction when they're, when they're resurfacing ice. So it's gonna really be hard on axles and it's not so much when they're on the ice because the wheels can slip. It's when they're in the parking lot dumping their snow tank. And this axle is going to have less movement, like it's going to be able to, it's going to be less resilient because it's so short. I got the, I do have the length of that one, uh, the Dana Spicer part for that axle if you need a replacement and you can get those from like a Dana dealer or Yukon gear and axle. There's about three different lengths on your short side. So these are narrowed like a Jeep axle and these of course. So you want to check your U-joints, make sure they're greased. I have heard of U-joints breaking because of the same thing, just the constant load and turning one direction. These ones are all fairly recent. You might want to replace those depending on how many hours you get every couple of years or so, just as a preventative maintenance when you repack your wheel bearings. I change oil in the front diff, rear diff, transfer case, and then you've got your main drive motor here. What you're going to want to do, I'll take a little more video when I open it up, is open it up here. Take your take your band off check your check your brushes and blow out all your graphite brush dust anyway just got the front diff draining and i thought i'd change that lower horizontal logger bearing while i was draining the diff just got a diaper in there getting the last of it i think it's pretty dry now but the diff oil on this thing this doesn't get a lot of hours and it was nice and clean so it's just really preventative all righty, let's get that back lower auger bearing put on there. Shaft's still a little bit warm. I think that if the shaft was cooler, that this would just slide right on. I got it cleaned up really good. Plenty of anti-seas in there. See, it's a little, a little snug, but I can put it on by hand, so that's what I want. And I will be making sure that this does get regularly greased. The operators are good about that, but I'm gonna make sure I get some fluid film and stuff in there just as a preventative measure. But like I say, it's just always packed with melting snow and ice stuff coming out of there. And whatever they pick up off the ice goes through there too. So uh, meaning like salt or, or if somebody spills something on the ice or whatever. So that's, that's uh, it's been a bit of a bear getting that out of there, but that's just the way she goes sometimes. Draining out transfer case now. See, this is a Hub City unit. Haven't had any problems with it. We had one leak underneath one of these covers after I resealed this been fine ever since. You can see that the oil isn't burnt or anything. It looks good. You're gonna wanna check for chunks in it or anything like that. Like I say, a lot of this is preventative maintenance stuff. It's a lot of inspection. Check your color, your oil, what's in it, things like that. Anyways, it kinda looks like if this might be a fill and this might be a drain and it just takes a really low level of oil, but that's not the case come up to the side here and you'll see that that's actually your oil level. So this thing is almost all right full of gear oil all the time. So just because the drain and fill hole aren't on the same side of the case doesn't mean that that's, that's the fill this one is, if that makes sense. All right, checking the drive lines and everything out as well. I'll be taking that motor apart shortly here. I'll show you what it looks like inside there. It's rude, eh? And as you can see, the oil coming out of this thing is nice and clean. This is just a good chance, opportunity to get a look at what your gears look like. Refresh the oil. Like I say, a lot of this is very preventative. You don't just don't want, they really don't want these things breaking down when there's a playoff game happening or something. The gears look good there. You can see a little bit of galling there, but I believe that that is just because this thing is such low hours that that's the, they're still wearing in. 
just going through that break-in period and you can see that the pinion or pardon me the crown gear looks good patterns square patterns good on that and uh, get open differential Dana 60 as you can see so I'm just gonna go ahead and clean this one up and fill her fill them all up with oil nice good synthetic gear oil grease all the points while I'm underneath here and then I can put it back down here's the main drive motor show you what the brushes look like in there so they're doubled up pump motor only has one this has got two eight I think in total but as you can see there's just in tandem this one isn't that bad as far as being dirty it's blown out every annual service of course so what you're gonna want to do is your blow gun this one wasn't that dirty usually you end up with quite a bit hanging around in there might want to wear a mask this is graphite dust and brushes of course so I'm gonna blow into the back there and try and get where there's dust around the rotor and the field windings check your, your how how big you are pardon me how long the brushes are I thought this one actually had percentages on them but apparently it doesn't some of them have like a little 80%, 90% indicator, like a tire wear bar. But I don't see any in this one. I don't know why I thought they had them. But there's quite a lot left on these brushes. You can see they're, they're not worn very far yet. So they'll be good for a long time yet. Here's a modification I want to show before I put the Zamboni down off the hoist. Here we have these adjusters here. They're brass, I think they got a stainless steel bolt. They're known for corroding and seizing up. So a neighboring municipality actually came up with this idea and they just put a, a grease line from like a grease gun or you can build a grease line, have one built, up to a fitting, just a pipe 90 there. Use it like a bulkhead fitting. And then put it in, I don't know if you can see that, it's a little too high up for me to film. So that you can just give them a shot of grease a couple times a year. And there's three of those here. Now I'm going to put a bunch of fluid film on them before I put it down. But you can see that they aren't seized because they've been being used there. You see where the threads are clean. So that's just some something that you would like, you might like to do just as an upgrade while you're doing your annual service. Top vertical auger bearing. So you want to pop your drive motor off. It's just four bolts there. Then you've got a, a coupler here drive that you take out just a set screw holding that on now unfortunately this bearing did turn a little bit on the shaft as you can see even though the bearing is still in good condition so these are tough to sub these bearings you're probably gonna have to get them from your dealer I was able to get a replacement bearing though and it has this different collar on it and this will lock better and I'm not worried too much about corrosion on, it, on this top piece so I'm going to put this one on as a replacement and I think that this, this locking collar being able to squeeze will hold that onto the shaft better than just the single set screw on this one because I don't like the idea that that shaft was turning inside the bearing. So they say about every two seasons change these out. You'll have to pull this little grease extension out of the zerk there before you can get your, this goes right through there, before you can pull this hydraulic motor and then your drive hosing off so this is one of the last maintenance items that I'm going to be looking after for this year's annual maintenance on the Zamboni I'm not sure if there's anything else that I need to tell you guys about the operators the arena operators usually change the curtain that's something else that you might want to might need to change then we've got kind of a squeegee a rubber piece down here I'm going to check the width on this on that rubber and if it needs to be changed up this flap I've got some I keep some in stock like I say the people at the arena the operators change look after changing the curtain when it needs to be changed but that's those are all things that you might want to check while you have your machine down for annual maintenance 
besides that I'm just gonna like I say you you want to check your pins and bushings on your conditioner here and if they need to be replaced you can take the bushing out of the inside of the housing get a replacement pin and, re and replace it if it's not too far gone they're quite thick so you should get pretty good life out of those I'll show you what they look like Here's some replacement pins and bushings here that I keep in stock and you can see there's quite a lot of wear. I mean those things are almost a quarter inch thick. So you're going to be getting a lot of wear, a lot of hours out of those even if even if the people aren't greasing them they should last quite a long time. Anyways so I think I'm going to wrap that up here. That is my insights on the Zamboni Electric 552 Ice Resurfacer. As I say, some of this stuff should be looked after by your arena operators changing the board brush and some things like that they can look after. So I want to thank everybody for watching this video dealing with some annual maintenance items and repairs on the Zamboni Electric model. If you liked it, please give me a like and subscribe and share this video to anybody that may be able to help.